Schalke started week eight of LEC Summer in last place, needing a 3-0 and other results to go their way to make playoffs. To finish off their regular season, they had to face the Mad Lions in a high stakes match, as their opponent was in need of a win to continue contesting for first place. Today we're having a look at how Schalke completed the miracle run into playoffs with all the odds stacked against them. Leading up to this match, Blue Side's win rate was 17-4 in the LEC on patch 10-15, and Schalke had gotten side selection to play Blue Side on all four of their matches on the patch. For this match, Mad had side selection, which meant Schalke had to play on Red Side. Blue Side is generally preferred on 10-15, due to the existence of several power picks, as well as solid blind picks for mid lane, which devalue counter pick options on Red Side. In draft, Schalke opt to ban one of those power picks in Caitlyn. With Caitlyn banned, Mad Lions pick comfort for Karzi in the form of Kalista. Schalke probably expected this and reply with an Ash pick, who is a good champion to limit Kalista in fights, as her permanent slows can heavily limit Kalista's mobility. They also blind pick Shen, who is susceptible to counters but has been a solid pick for Oduwamne, who has relied on Shen and Camille picks in the last couple of weeks. Overall, it's comfort across the board for Schalke but picking comfort has its risks, as it meant blind picking top and also blind picking support and losing part of the advantage that Ash can have over Kalista. In the mid lane, Corky is used as a response to LeBlanc, but he isn't expected to win the matchup. Instead, the pick is commonly used as a scaling option that can survive the lane and outperform LeBlanc in teamfights. By looking at the matchups, it's clear that Mad have three pushing lanes and Schalke have to accept that they will be losing early. The game plan is simple, lose gracefully to ensure that once item spikes arrive, they won't be too far behind. At 9 minutes, the gold is even. Mad have taken an early dragon and herald and are looking for a good window to use it to break the first turret and get ahead. Schalke spot Volibear in the bot side of the jungle and immediately after they see Kalista and Bard push and leave the bot lane. Ash's Hawkshot doesn't spot them recalling, so Schalke's bot lane immediately pivot to potentially match the movement to mid. They spot Mad's play right as it happens. Three members collapse on Shada who is trying to flank while Shen ult gives Corky enough protection and the man advantage in the fight. Schalke's good reactive play wins them the engagement. From there, Schalke push out their lanes, place vision, and reset to set up defensively again. They don't even attempt to contest the second Drake. They want more items before committing to a fight. After taking the second Drake, Mad attempt to play once again, but Schalke snuff it out and respond. Spotting Volibear and Bard moving from mid to bot, Dreams on Tom Kench moves accordingly to the middle of the jungle, positioning himself in between both lanes and in a spot where he can abyssal voyage to either mid or bot. The moment Mad pull the trigger, Schalke are ready. Shen uses Stand United, Tom Kench teleports in with abyssal voyage, and an enchanted crystal arrow is shot from mid lane. Mad get nothing, from the attempted dive. We're now 17 minutes in and the third Drake is about to spawn. Getting an early Dragon Soul is Mad's win condition, and Schalke know this. Itemization isn't ideal for this fight, as Quirky hasn't hit his item spikes yet. Schalke's tanks have decent itemization for magic damage, but little armor against Kalista. Schalke need to take the fight regardless, or it's sole point in five minutes for the Mad Lions. So they set up in the river first to maximize their chances. They lay down vision and take scuttle. It's important to note here that Corky has package for this objective. This is a conscious decision to leave it in the base for several minutes and save it for this Drake fight. As Schalke start the Drake, Corky uses the package to block off the entry to the pit. Bard, Callista, and Mordekaiser are walled off from the fight. Gilius crucially wins the smite contest against Shadow. Schalke lose the fight three to two, but securing the Drake is a true win as they have bought themselves more time. Now with items, Schalke are ready to go on the offensive. They leverage their globals once again for a play in the top lane which nets them a kill and a turret. One minute later, Corky grabs the package and Schalke set up first for another Drake fight. As they start, Corky dashes in. He trades one for one with the Mordekaiser, but the fire trail limits Mad's entry to the river. Schalke play the fight slowly, chunking out Madline's carries and keeping them at bay with Ash and Sejuani. As the dragon falls low, Shadow is forced to commit, but Schalke turn on him before the objective is even in smite range. Schalke take their second Drake. At this point, the gold is even, but the match is completely turned on its head. 
The Royal Blues have finally scaled. Corky is close to three items and will be able to outperform LeBlanc in teamfights. Ash can heavily limit Callista's impact with a barrage of slows, and the rest of the Schalke composition is fairly tanky. Mad Lions have lost their main win condition, which was to accelerate the game and grab an early Dragon Soul. From here, Schalke would go on to win the game in 35 minutes. In this match, they showed the importance of knowing how to lose gracefully against a superior early game composition, as well as understanding the importance of setting up correctly for neutral objectives to maximize their chances. Aside from an impressive seven game win streak, other results would go their way and Schalke completed their miracle run by qualifying for the summer playoffs and a chance to qualify for the world championship.